So in this video, we are going to be talking about some of the academic principles at stake in the egg drop project. And the first one we're going to visit slash review from the bridge project is the topic of force. So anytime we're dealing with moving objects or collisions, we need to talk about force, which remember is just a push or pull on an object. And think about the egg drop. The main force at stake is the gravitational force, which pulls the egg in its shell down to the ground. Newton's laws describe the motion of the egg in its casing from the moment it's dropped until it hits the ground at impact. And it's our job to make that impact as small as possible so the egg doesn't feel as high of a force, which brings us to the topic of impulse. So impulse relates force and time, and it's one of two ways that we can really make a solid egg drop casing. A couple of real world examples that illustrate impulse are a trampoline, or those bumpers that are on the side of the freeway. And the purpose of those is to make the collision of impact last over a long period of time, and that way it reduces the force. Think about if you're jumping on a trampoline and you got really high, and you jumped down and hit concrete. That would hurt. But since you jump on a trampoline and it lets you down slowly before bouncing you back up, that disperses the force over a period of time and makes it not all hit at once, hence the term impulse. So in short, instead of your egg just free falling and landing on the ground and splattering, we're trying to give it a nice cushy landing. And here's a sneak peek at some of the materials we're going to give you. Use things like cotton balls or crumpled up newspaper to help make that nice soft landing for it and reduce the force over time so it doesn't all hit at once. Believe it or not, NASA engineers deal with impulse all the time. Did you know on their Mars rovers that they design an airbag system that surrounds their rovers when they land on Mars to help reduce the impact of that collision? And so nothing breaks on the rover when it comes in at a high speed from Mars's atmosphere and lands on the surface of the planet. Speaking of NASA and aircraft and space, the other topic that's really going to help us out make a good casing for our egg is the topic of air resistance. Air resistance's equation is on your screen right now, but don't get too caught up in its complexity. The big thing we're looking at here is the area portion of it. The left side of that equation is the force of the air resistance, or how much the moving object is being opposed by the air. And like I said, the A on that right side is the important part for us. It means surface area. When people design airplanes, they want small surface area of the wings so they glide through the air nice and smooth. In our case, we want that force to be nice and high so our casing and our egg come down nice and slow. We want to make a big surface area so it gets caught more by the wind. Here's an example of that right now. This is the same piece of newspaper, but one's crumpled up and one is nice and flat still. I bet the one with the larger surface area will float down to the ground a lot more slowly because of the higher air resistance. And look at that. Remember, it's entirely up to you for how you want to build your egg drop casing. But here's another sneak peek at some materials you might want to think about to really catch that air and give a high air resistance and surface area to your egg drop. So tune in to the next video in order to find more tips on how to use air resistance and impulse in order to make a solid egg drop case.